Welcome everybody to Next Level Snap. My name is Peaceful. I have here with me, Lammy. Lammy series needs no introduction. How are you doing today, Lammy? I'm doing great, man. Uh, right before we recorded this, I just had a really good stream. Uh, yeah, ready to rock and roll. Ready to rock and roll. All right. As always, make sure if this is content you enjoy, that you are uh, subscribed to Lammy's channel, that you hit that like button. Let us know in the comments what you liked about this video, what you would like to see in the future, what topics you'd like to see discussed. That all helps Lammy series grow his channel, helps get this video to more people so that more people can get the help they need in Marvel Snap. Now, we, we went pretty deep, I think we talked about in the last couple episodes where it was topics we thought were something that we could do that would apply to a lot of people, but then ended up getting a little bit deeper uh, into it. And we wanted to do something a little bit lighter and a little bit more applicable to maybe not just Snap, but other, other games you play. So today we are going to be talking about tournament prep. So we're going to talk about two different things, really um, focusing on finding the correct deck for your tournament, but then also just like mental prep, like how do you get ready for a tournament, how to uh, put off fatigue and um, that sort of thing in longer tournaments to keep your, your brain fresh and all that good stuff. So uh, Lammy, I'm going to kind of defer to you here. Why don't you kind of give us an overview of what you think of tournament prep, what it means to you and what sort of things you think are important. Okay, so I'm going to start talking about tournaments in general. So not exactly Marvel Snap tournaments, but like if you have to prepare for anything important, like a big event, that you know it's going to be um, mentally tiring, you know it's going to drain you a little bit, you know it's going to like require a lot of your critical thinking skills and stuff like that. I think this is relevant across multiple card games, multiple games even. Um, So I've played and competed in many many games at some of the highest levels uh of that particular game before so i feel like some of the things that i've learned and i'm gonna say like today is like over time i learned it the hard way and i guess listening to this video just makes it not trying to say that you don't have to go through the hard way but like it shortens the process and i think that's really important because you need to be i think number one is you got to be aware of what you're doing so yeah when it comes to tournament prep i feel like uh firstly when you choose to play a tournament you know that it's competitive. You know that people are going to try hard. People are going to want to win whatever you're winning, right? Winning more cards, winning prize money, stuff like that. So you know that you got to bring your A game, right? No one rocks up to the tournament and just like decides randomly to win and just wins. I mean, sometimes it does happen, right? You get lucky. But like for the most part, preparing for a tournament means that you need to do your homework. And by doing your homework, it just means that you need to study for card games in particular. What is the meta right now? Um, what do you expect? to see in the tournament? What do you expect to beat? What do you expect to play? Stuff like that. that, that, that that's uh, basically studying the meta. And to go a little bit deeper into that, you have to understand how matchups work. I think this is very important because a lot of decision making, especially in card games, is done with... It's a knowledge-based game. You need to be able to um, have make the most informed decisions based on what you know of the matchup. Uh, we'll go a bit deeper into that later. And another thing that I think is very, very overlooked, which has nothing to do with the game itself, is rest. I feel like um, if you're going to be competing in an event, the most important thing is that you have your own caliber. Like, you know you're decently good. You know you're above average. Maybe you know you're only just average. But regardless, to play at your optimum level, you need to be able to think clearly. And thinking clearly is not as easy as people think, right? Because, like, you can think, like, all right, um, right, I'm going to just, like, down two cups of coffee, no sleep, go straight. It's like it's like prepping for an exam, right? Yeah. People always think, like, I'm just going to, like, uh, do this overnight study thing and then rock up to the exam and, like, be perfectly ready to regurgitate everything it's the same in card games you, it doesn't work because your optimal thinking uh muscle memory plus recalling what you've learned only can happen if you've had enough rest so i feel like uh prepping for a tournament outside of exactly just like the cards and like like learning the interactions and stuff like that you also need to learn how to manage yourself which is your discipline right your rest your comfort level cannot be understated like if you are playing a tournament in like the desert perspiring like crazy okay this is never gonna happen but like yeah. like the point is the point is basically if you are full of discomfort you really cannot like optimize your thinking and self yeah well and then rest a lot of people don't realize but like when you don't get enough sleep it just it makes it so much easier for things like tilt to become a factor where like when you're tired, you're just, you're more likely to get frustrated or upset by something that happens. That's just a natural human thing. It's just the way our bodies work. I think that's something that cannot be understated. I mean, just in general, people get a full night's sleep. It's, it's important. 
All right. Well, let's um let's sort of dive in a little bit deeper into each of these things. So first up, we're going to talk about uh, prepping and learning the metagame for a major tournament. So um, when testing decks and preparing for a major tournament, what data points do you find most helpful? And uh, this just applies for any 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 card game or any game that you would you would go to a tournament for. All right. So now we are going to dive a little bit more specifically into Marvel Snap. I'm going to use examples that uh, could be relevant at the time of watching this because of the way of the time we filmed it and could not be as relevant in the future. But like, it's just going to be a bit of a uh, metagame stuff regarding the tournament scene. So um, when you prep decks for a tournament, firstly, you got to identify what's good. There's a few ways of looking at it. So I'm going to talk about firstly open deck list tournaments because that's the more popular one right now for Marvel Snap, right? So open deck list tournaments means when you start the game, start the match, start the tournament, you can look at your opponent's deck list, you know what they're playing and they also know what you're playing. So it's sort of a bit more soft, which is like you can know what their 12 cards are, they know what your 12 cards are. There's less surprise factor involved. Um, The, the important thing about open deck list tournaments is really the matchups. Like you really got to know like, okay, so Zabu Dark Hawk versus Brute Apps, uh, apps man deck um silk deck versus brute apps man deck uh destroy versus uh shuri red skull like you know these matchups you've played them on ladder you've played them in conquest but to do well in tournaments tournaments you need to know these matchups at the back of your hand which what, what does that mean so in your testing uh things that you look out for um what is the best thing each deck can do at any one point in time i think we've talked about this in the first video uh, <laughs> yep when it comes to snapping uh which is very relevant for tournaments because you need to know when you can snap them because in a tournament open deck list you know what you can do you know what your opponents can do but you need to know when you can snap your opponent and you know need to know also when they snap you what could they have right so these are the things that you test when it comes to preparing for a tournament so know your own deck know your potential matchups which is um funny because like I know there are some very popular decks out there right now, which uh, everyone plays against. It is interesting because personally, I'd rather play against something that I've prepared against before than something that I've never prepared against before because uh, you you can't really make the most optimal decisions versus uh, decks that you've never seen before. Like someone rocks up to a tournament with a something out of nowhere that you've never seen before. Those are always very scary because they know 100% how their deck works. You only know 70% because you look at the list, you have an idea, but you've never practiced against it before. So you don't actually know what are all the choke points, what are all the like like secret, sneaky interactions they can do. So those are a little bit more scarier. But uh, th those rarely happen because at, in a tournament, I feel like there's a reason why people always bring the best decks because they've been proven to be good, right? So yep. at, a, at a general base level, I feel like preparing your decks for a tournament, it's not just preparing your deck in person, in per personally, but also prepare um, to know how to beat certain decks because like those are the meta decks right so to like narrow things down a bit i feel like when you prepare just look at uh like this is just generic rule of thumb like look at what you've been playing at uh in, in conquest on ladder um understand that these are the popular decks understand that you got to learn how to play that matchup uh yeah and i think that's one of the most important things when it comes to uh preparing your decks in particular for a tournament um regarding tech because in open deck list in particular tech is something that uh it's open, so your even if you have a secret special tech in your deck, your opponent will see and know it. Uh, you can yeah. use it to your advantage as well, right? Like if you run Shang Chi, for example, very simple example. If you run Shang Chi, they know you have a Shang Chi, so you can uh, get away with some very interesting like snaps, right? Like let's say they have like a like a, like a free monster island that pops up, and they don't have Shang Chi, you have Shang Chi, so they both we both know that I have a Shang Chi, so you could snap on that. And then they'd be like, oh no, he has Shang, maybe I should leave, that kind of thing. You know, like, yeah. th th those are, th these are how techs usually work in open deck lists. But yeah, I'm going to jump away a bit and go into closed deck lists. So closed deck lists is a bit interesting. It's the less popular format in Marvel Snap as of now. But for closed deck lists, there is uh, more things up in the air, which is when you prepare for a closed deck list tournament, it's more about having a surprise factor in your deck, like a super secret eight cuber surprise factor in your deck. I call it an eight cuber because it's one of those cards that if you show your opponent, it's meant to score you like four to eight cubes because yep. they don't know it's there. And your opponent might probably be doing the same to you. So prepping decks for closed deck lists, uh, it, as much as it's the less popular format, the most important thing is you want to have a card in your deck or two cards in your deck that um doesn't really affect the flow of your deck. Best, best case is if it actually complements your deck and it's also a super secret tag that no one really plays. Uh, that when you when you when you show it when you play it, 
uh, it just wrecks the matchup. Like, I'm going to use a very simple example. Uh, let's say we are in a Patriot meta, right? Patriot, uh, everybody knows what Patriot is. If you are rocking up to a tournament close deck list, Patriot, with Super Scroll in your deck, and no one actually really plays Super Scroll for whatever reason, you could really get some insane steals and wins snapping off that Super Scroll uh, and stuff like that. So, close deck list tournaments, as much as it's a bit more random and it's uh, scarier sometimes because uh, there's a lot of randomness going on, you, you really need something unexpected in your deck, which is like, for example, if... Okay, I'm going to just put it this way. Um, let's say Zabu Dark Hawk. Everyone runs Shang-Chi and Enchantress in Zabu Dark Hawk, right? But what if you run Shang-Chi, Enchantress, and a Super Scroll? Like, for example, right? People naturally, in close deck list tournaments, they're like, all right, okay, Zabu Dark Hawk. Got to play around Shang, got to play around Enchantress. But what if there is one more thing that they got to play around that they just don't know is in your deck? So, close deck list tournaments, uh, deck prep, uh, sometimes you need a special secret tech inside. Doesn't mean that uh, for closed deck list tournaments, you don't need to practice matchups like in open deck list. But in closed deck list, I would say a lot more of the winning is done in the surprise factor. Less about um, just looking at your opponent's list and then figuring things out because you can't, there's no list to look at. So for yeah. closed deck list TLDR, you need like a bit of a surprise factor. Yeah, oh man. There, there was a little while there where the Super Scroll was the tech. And it was, it's one of those funny things where it gets to a, a, a tipping point where it goes from being the surprise factor to you're like, oh, they snapped. They're probably running Super Scroll. It, it had gotten to that critical because everybody was running Dark Hawk in tournaments. Oh, I need to add one more thing I just remembered. Um, so basically, the you need tech cards in both like open and closed deck lists. But like, the purpose <laughs> is very slightly different, which is quite cool, which is in open deck lists, your tech cards are there to give you bluff potential per se. But in close deck list, if you are snapping on like a tech card that has never been seen before, your opponent also doesn't really know what you are snapping on. So you can't really bluff a special tech in close deck list. Like you can bluff things like Shang Chi because those are everywhere, right? But yeah. if you want to bluff something like a I don't know out of nowhere Juggernaut, Shadow King, these are a bit less popular. So if you are trying to like scam a win, um, in close deck list, it usually doesn't work. In close deck list, usually uh your tech is there to actually win because yeah. they don't know it's there. So it's just a cool interaction that I think people need to think of when they're playing these tournaments. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The the bluffs in, turn in uh, open deckless tournaments are... I think where it, Snap gets to that really cool next level when you're watching it is because the really good players both know how to bluff, but also are pretty good at sniffing them out. So what mistakes do you see people make when they're with deck choices for tournaments? Like, what are some things you see a lot in tournaments where you're like, oh, you know, that that's that's why you're not going to make it to the, the top you know 16 top eight all right so i'm going to talk about two very major things there's a lot actually <laughs> i could go on forever but like there, there's two major things that you should theoretically not do for your own sanity which is firstly as much as we talked about preparing for tournaments playing the best decks knowing the matchups blah 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 stuff like that in like the first 10 minutes of this video if for whatever reason you have zero experience or super little experience playing a particular deck, don't just play it just because the whole world says it's the best deck ever. Because like, yes, it might be the best deck ever, and it factually is, but if you've never practiced with the deck and just randomly decide to bring it to a tournament just because someone says it's good, there's a very good chance you will not know all the interactions of the deck, not know the choke points, not know the snapping points, not know the matchup versus your opponent's deck, and stuff like that. And if you do, and you'll end up in these situations, right? The person with more practice with that deck will probably win because they, they, they've had the time to practice with um, said best deck in the game. So even if there is like a best deck in the game and you just happen to have not practiced, right? No one's blaming you, but like, yeah, you should have practiced, obviously. But like, if you didn't, don't just succumb to the fact that um, it's the best, so I gotta bring it. I just gotta bring it. Yeah, you gotta bring it if you've practiced, right? But if you bring it and you don't know how it works, you're probably going to lose a lot of percentages just because you might be playing against someone who knows how it works. So don't force yourself to bring just the best deck if you don't know how it works. That's something that I've encountered over so many different card games. And like people just like burn out and like like just get destroyed in tournaments because they like they like don't know what's going on with their own deck, even though it's the best deck. And that's the that's the worst thing that can happen to you, right? It's like a loss and you don't even know what's going on. So don't force yourself to play decks you don't understand, even though you probably should, but if you don't, don't force it. And second thing I think that's very important is um, tech cards. Tech cards. Um, so especially in Marvel Snap is super important, which is 
Your deck is 12 cards, alright? Let's look at it. This is a, like a numbers game thing. Your deck is 12 cards, of which probably maybe 6 to 8 cards are your core engine, which means 6 to 8 cards in your deck are definitely needed for it to function at its normal pace. As much as you want to be cool, you want to be sneaky, you want to one-up your opponent, you want to attack for everything, if you are removing pieces of your engine, for example, okay, this is going to be very, like, extreme, but if you somehow find that you need to play specific tech cards in your Silk deck and you remove the Silk, which is, like, the point of your deck, for example, yeah. I know this is extreme, but just trying to get the point across, uh, you will realize that your deck cannot function at its normal pace. So I think the the balance in a tournament where you want to try and be cool, try and be smart, try and be intuitive, try and be next level, cannot supersede or like cannot go over the fact that your deck needs to function normally as well. So that's why in a game like Marvel Snap with only 12 cards, I feel like tacking excesses excessively is the number one way you just lose to yourself. Like, yep. you you overthink. You're like, all right, I need to cover the collector's matchup. I need to cover the Dark Hawk matchup. I need to cover everything, right? You need to, you think you yeah. need to beat everything, but then you put all these random cards in your deck that are supposedly good versus each matchup, but you can't even win your normal good matchup. Or you can't even win normally because you make your deck more inconsistent by cutting important pieces of the normal deck to play special cards that could work in the right scenario and then you can't even function normally. So I think TLDR um, for the second point is you are supposed to have some tech. Yes, we talked about it at the start of like this portion, but you are not supposed to tech to the point whereby you can't function at your own normal rate. So I think in Marvel Snap, uh, just throwing it out there again, a nice balance is like, let's say your engine is eight cards, eight important cards, right? Maybe you have space for two techs, but if like six cards are like, normal cards that you use to win a game and the other six are just tech, 50% of the time you're not drawing enough of your normal game plan to just win if things go normally. You know, yes. and then like, <laughs> you're just stuck with a bunch of cards that can't do anything if your opponent doesn't play a particular matchup. That's one way to really lose very quickly. Oh, I agree. And just to add on just a little minor note, Chavez, any deck that you see online with Chavez in it, that is part of the core. Any deck that runs Chavez, they run it because you need to draw certain cards in the early turns to really execute your game plan. Please stop cutting Chavez for tech cards. That's like, I don't know, like probably top five of my biggest pet peeves about people with Marvel Snap. And like, I'll, I'll post a deck or I'll see a deck post and I'm like, oh, this looks awesome. And then people will be like, oh, I'm running this version of it and it's working great. And I look and like the first card they've cut is Chavez. I'm like, what? Don't, no. <laughs> you, need, you need Chavez for that consistency. I would say... When we're talking about the core of a deck, if you pull a deck list from online and you see Chavez in it, that's part of the core. Please don't cut it. <laughs> and uh, I know yep. you agree with me on that one. So we, we dived into a little bit more Marvel Snap specific stuff. Let's get back into some just some general uh, tournament advice. What is a what is a good pre tournament routine look like for you? Like, what are some things that you do to get yourself ready for a tournament? Oh, I always love to talk about this one because, and I love to talk about this one, and I also love to hear what people do, like other competitors and other like people in other disciplines, other card games, other games. Because like, it's always very different for each individual person. But I noticed that there are some very similar points to success, which I think we should highlight first, which is, um, um, for me personally, there's a lot. But like some of the things that like I realize most people do is firstly, we talked about it at the start of the video, uh, strategy games, brain games, uh, sleep. Sleep is super important. If you know you have a tournament at X timing, work backwards and make sure you have enough rest so that you can function optimally, you can think optimally, you can make the optimal decisions that you've practiced for because if you have lack of sleep, you very often cannot make the best decisions even though you've practiced so hard to make those decisions, right? So it's actually counterproductive. Uh, one thing that I used to do very horribly and I make this mistake so often is like I practice down to the last minute and I would submit my decks and stuff like that and then I would have like so much on my mind, right? Like at a point in time, I didn't have enough rest and I was like fatigued from all the prep at the last minute. And then I couldn't even perform properly in a tournament because like I was thinking about so many external factors and extra things that didn't really matter. So I think getting proper sleep and proper rest is also very important to set yourself in a mindset whereby you can just do the thing you practice to do. All right. So, but that being said, of course, if you know that you have a tournament at X date, X time, work backwards, prep in advance and even though once in a while you'll be like oh crap i have like stuff missing i need to practice an extra three more hours but if you if you practice an extra three more hours you don't get your seven eight hours of sleep before the tournament it's probably gonna be counterproductive that extra three hours so like obviously no practice is bad but practice at the wrong time is also very bad so get your rest in 
Uh, it's super important, especially when it comes to strategy card games. Um, one other thing when it comes to pre-tournament is that we mentioned it a lot earlier already, which is like uh, studying the meta, like like deck choices, stuff like that. I feel like one thing that a lot of people, when it comes to card games, that um don't get is that they tend to make a lot of last minute changes. This one is uh, it ties in with with the whole like understanding your deck thing because like there's a lot of ex- external factors. There's social media. There is uh, there's a lot, but like it's very rare that if you've been preparing for this for a while, something magically just hits you that is like so new and so amazing that you have to include in your deck, stuff like that. Like if you've been preparing, that's very rare that there is like stuff that, that, that just comes out of the blue and just like says, oh, okay, this is a must include. Like I feel like a lot of people go wrong when it comes to, they try to add something in at the last minute because like, I don't know, they just think it's amazing. Like, like yeah, sometimes it is, uh, sometimes it's not. But like most of the time, you should stick to what you know. Don't try and like exactly. be too smart for yourself. Stick to what you know. Like um, if you've been play, if you've never played Thanos your whole life, or like, and then suddenly you felt like, oh, uh, maybe I should bring this Thanos deck, blah blah blah. Like then you just don't you don't practice and you just bring a Thanos deck. Like you probably wouldn't understand what's going on, right? So yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's very similar to some of the previous points, but yeah, I think pre tournament routine, you gotta stick to your guns. You gotta know what your weapons are. You gotta know like um what you are good at doing and uh, stick to it. So I think that's one thing that's really important as well. I agree. I agree. I think that's a great point. Just, you know, if you are if you have like 30 hours with a deck, you're guaranteed to do better with that deck than you are. Switch into that other deck that looks super spicy and super good. Just stick, like you said, stick to your guns. It's a great point. All oh, right. wait, sorry, so, one more thing. Um, oh, yeah, so basically, yeah, no worries. So basically, um, Pre-tournament routine simplified is really all about time management. It's really, really all about time management. Because like everything I said earlier, if you have the time to do everything, like learn everything, practice everything, sure, perfect. Like do it, right? Because you have the time. You made the time to do it and everything. But if you don't, I think don't compromise yourself to the point to try and squeeze everything in, you know. I think most importantly, just learn uh, like, like if you don't have time to do everything that you're supposed to do, I guess just learn the basics, like learn a bit of the meta decks, learn how to play your deck properly. That's really important. And then after doing that, sleep, rest, yeah. however it is, whatever it is to make yourself feel comfortable so you can rock up to the tournament and make the most informed decisions with what you know and not half ass decisions with what you may not know. Absolutely. Great points. One more question that we're going to move on and sort of sum everything up for you guys. What are, what are some things you do during a tournament to sort of keep yourself mentally fresh? Okay, so this one's quite interesting also because uh, there's like so many things that can be done. But I think this is very personal, which is like you need to be able to have things that you do for yourself. Like you need to experiment, like things that you can do for yourself to keep yourself um, refreshed, keep yourself mentally steady, especially like um, long tournaments, right? Sometimes Swiss tournaments, you take a loss randomly in a round. You made a misplay, which is not impossible even for people like myself because... Everyone makes mistakes, right? Like, yeah. like you can make mistakes even if you've prepared. It just happens sometimes. So how you keep yourself thin, how you keep yourself untilted. Uh, most importantly, I think for me, uh, this is not going to be the same for you or anyone else, but you got to find it for yourself. So what I do is that let's say I, I come off a loss. Uh, I, I always get off my chair. I always like go take a walk. Like not obviously too far, but like just go take a walk. Just like try to not think about that match. I always remind myself that like it's not over. It's actually just one round in a tournament. You got to focus on winning the next match and then the next match. Like one match at a time. I think it's very important and especially for myself because I play a lot of tournaments, right? You need to remember that like you always need to take one match at a time even though it's like let's say you lose round one. Six rounds left. You also cannot think like alright, I need to win six matches. You need to think like I need to win the next match. And then when you win the next match, think of winning the next match. And then think of winning the next match. Like, if you keep having this mental mindset whereby it's six more, six more, six more, you're not even mentally focusing on the one right in front of you. Uh, and then you probably will not be able to, like, take that match for what it is, right? You have this thing at the back of your head that keeps, like, haunting you. Like, all right, there's six more, there's six more, there's six more. You're not even focusing on what's in front of you. So I think uh, perspective is very important. You need to be able to focus on what's in front of you right now. Uh, when it comes to long tournaments because it's going to be long regardless but in order to make it worth your while in order to keep winning you need to focus on what's in front of you uh, I also tend to be super hydrated during tournaments like a lot of water so a lot of bathroom breaks stuff like that like it's it's very basic human things right aside from the one that I talk about like sleep like you really need to try to 
know how to keep yourself at your optimal efficiency level, which is low-key impossible after a certain period, which is like, let's say yeah. the tournament is going to last for 10 hours. At like the five-hour mark, it's very, very normal to like function less effectively. So I think one thing that I use and do for myself to keep myself mentally in check for tournaments is very like copium, but it's also very true, which is I always tell myself, you are allowed to lose. Like this thing in my head is constantly playing. Like, like at this point, people know that I'm good at this game. Like I'm one of the best players in this game, correct, right? But yeah. I also always constantly tell myself that I'm allowed to lose because I've done like show matches. I've done big competitions. I flew overseas to play, stuff like this, all, all these kind of things. You know that you are of a certain caliber, for example, if you have like, access to all these kind of like events and stuff like you know but the thing is how to keep yourself steady how to keep yourself like not cracking under the pressure which is super important right like be it if you like play in like the final round of swiss uh the final round before top cut or like in the finals itself how do you keep yourself mentally sane and like so that you can like play in the next event or like actually focus and win this one is you need to constantly tell yourself that no matter how good you are no matter how favored you are in a matchup no matter how your opponent is inexperienced compared to you, stuff like that. You need to accept that expectations are a real thing. You need to expect that, sorry, not expect. You need to be able to tell yourself that no matter what, I'm allowed to lose. Because if you have your expectations so high in a tournament and then you play against, let's say, an inexperienced player. This happens a lot with like top players, by the way. They know they are good. They play against an inexperienced player. They either misplay or their inexperienced player high rolls them, they get so absorbed in the fact that they are supposed to win, all right? Yeah. They get so absorbed in the fact that they are supposed to win that they get, they go they just crash and burn for the rest of the tournament and the subsequent tournaments, they have this like thought in my head whereby, in their head whereby like, oh, I, I was supposed to win that. That guy didn't deserve to win, blah, 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 yeah. stuff like that. And then it affects them in the super long run So and then they cannot function. So I feel like you need to always be like mentally humble with yourself to sustain long tournaments and long multiple tournaments, which is you need to tell yourself regardless of who you are, regardless of who you play, you need to be able to accept that you are allowed to lose and not be too hard on yourself. I mean, you can be hard on yourself when you make a misplay or like stuff like that. But at the end of the day, you need to remember that you are not immortal. You're not like God. You are allowed to lose. And if you can accept this fact and you can live with this fact that like I'm allowed to lose, then uh, you tend to be able to not be so prone to tilt in general. Yeah. One small note to add and then I'll, well, uh, we'll go ahead and start wrapping things up, but it's like the compartmentalization, right? Where it's like, you need to be able to take that loss, accept that, oh, hey, you know, I lost. It's not the end of the world. But then like, when you move on to the next round, that's got to be it. That's something that yes. I've worked really hard on where I'm like, okay, this round's over. And whether I won or lost, I don't go into the next round like winning and be like, oh man, I'm on a roll. Nothing can stop me. Because then you're also like, there's people always think of negative tilt, but there's also that, I don't know what else to call it, but positive tilt where you're on a high, you've won four in a row and you're thinking like you're just on fire. You're not paying as much attention to what you're doing and you're not focusing as much on making the correct plays because you just feel like you just feel like you're on a roll. And then you, that's, that's where I tend to make the most mistakes is when I'm on a roll. Because I just sort of feel like I'm, you know, you you, you get in the same mindset, but just in the opposite way where you're, you're almost too high on yourself. You're almost too positive about yourself. You're thinking too much about how well you're doing and you need to instead be focusing on making the correct plays. And that's, that's good. Good advice. Great advice. All right. Let's go ahead. And, let's go ahead and wrap things up. Uh, Lamy, I'll go ahead and let you do this. Let's give them a summary for people who want to, you know, maybe don't want to listen to the whole video. But we can get, we can, they can skip to this and you give them just the bullet points. What should people take away from this video about prepping for tournaments? So um, I'm going to summarize some of the most important points that we talked about in like uh, as quick as possible. So uh, prepping for tournaments, firstly, to me, like the most important has not, nothing to do with like even the game, which is you need to rest. Firstly, I keep talking about this rest thing, right? Rest, rest, rest. You need to be able to think clearly. If you're playing a tournament, you know that you have a certain caliber or like you just want to try it for the first time. But regardless, you need to be able to think optimally. And thinking optimally means enough rest. All right? That's, that's number one. Number two, um, preparation before the tournament. Understand what is popular right now, the meta. Because you cannot blanket, like cover everything, right? That's humanly impossible. Like you cannot practice for everything. So just understand what is popular in the game right now. Look at Twitter, look at like social media, look at like websites and look, understand what's popular. Just practice uh, the popular matchups, uh, know how they work 
and just go from there. Because like like I said, you cannot really focus on everything. So focus on the things that you know generally people like to do and like to bring. And that should be a first step towards doing well in your tournaments. Uh, one more small note, close deck list, open deck list. We talked about this quite a bit. Open deck list, very important, especially the matchups. Like the, the earlier point about the matchup thing is even more important for open deck list because it's more perfect info when you can see your opponent's deck. So practice those popular decks and know them inside out where possible. And for close deck list, uh, after practicing the matchups, think about what could be that one card that would give you the super edge in a particular matchup or in certain matchups and maybe play it in your deck, but don't overtech. Preparing for tournaments is uh, dangerous if you play too much tech, card in your, tech cards in your deck because uh, then your deck cannot function at optimal efficiency. And at the end of the day, I think to prevent tilt and to stay mentally fresh throughout tournaments, you need to have like a calming system, a system whereby it lets you keep your calm, keep your cool. Simple things like uh, after a loss, walk off and take a breather, get a drink of water, uh, stuff like that. Like always remember that you're allowed to lose no matter how good you are or how new you are, right? There's no such thing as I cannot lose. Expectations are to be managed because if you let your expectations like get out of control, you tend to put yourself in positions whereby you are adding additional stress to yourself, which is very real in tournaments. Yeah. A lot of top competitors put a lot of additional stress on themselves without knowing why. Most of the time, it's because of expectation management. You need to know that you're allowed to lose. You know you're good, but you're also allowed to lose. That's very important. All right, good stuff, man. I think, I think that about wraps it up for, for today. If you all have any questions you think we didn't cover about this topic, please let us know in the comments and uh, stay tuned. We will have a lot more of these coming up. We, uh, we'd we love to hear from you. Let us know what topics you'd like to see. Uh, Lammy, thank you as always. Everybody, hope you have a great day and we'll catch you next time. See you guys soon.